said the other night, shortly after the shuttle tragedy, that the three men in the orbiting space station, the International Space Station, must surely feel like the loneliest men in the universe. Not only were they having to deal with the trauma of the disaster, the death of good friends, they were, for now at least, somewhat stranded. Today, we heard from the astronauts in the space station saying, one, quote, my first reaction to the shuttle tragedy was pure shock. I was numb. It was hard to believe that what we were experiencing was really happening. After listening to some of the tapes today released by NASA, we can imagine a similar feeling among some of the folks at Mission Control that morning, the gradual, unthinkable realization that routine landing was turning out to be anything but. Once again, here's CNN's Kathleen Koch. The first indication of trouble came just five minutes before the shuttle disintegrated. A NASA engineer reports sensors on the left wing going out. Why I have just lost four separate uh, temperature transducers on the left side of the vehicle. In the 30 seconds before Columbia's final transmission, NASA calmly notes more problems. We just lost uh, tire pressure on left outboard and left inboard both tires. In Columbia, Houston, we see your tire pressure copy. messages, and we did not copy your last. Is it instrumentation, lab. Max? Our flight max guns are also off, off zero. Zero. Mission Control thinks Columbia has plunged into the brief period where communication sometimes drops out, but too many seconds tick by. You weren't expecting uh, a little bit of ratty calm, but not this long? That's correct, flight. I expect it to be a little bit intermittent, and this is pretty solid right here. Houston, in vain, tries backup radio frequencies to reach the shuttle. Columbia, Houston, UHF, comm check. Columbia, Houston, UHF, comm check. Minutes later, reality sets in. Lock the doors. Copy. Mission Control locks the doors and orders flight controllers to save all data in their workspaces. That's for your workstation logs, display printouts. There's a whole list of data collection items that we need to make sure we log through. Anxious to sift through that data, the new Columbia Accident Investigation Board. At its first press conference, it said it would be searching for the truth, not pointing fingers. We want to find the causes of this, not the guilty parties. As the first truckloads of shuttle debris headed for Kennedy Space Center in Florida, the board says so far no shuttle parts have been found west of Fort Worth, Texas. But it insists the search in western states will continue because it is possible something, perhaps key evidence, is out there. Meanwhile, the board is ordering thermal tests to check the heat resistance of shuttle wings and their protective tiles. And NASA will be putting a mock-up shuttle wing in, high sp in a high-speed wind tunnel to see just how different patterns of damage to the tiles or to that very critical leading edge of the wing affects the shuttle's temperature and stability. Aaron. A week ago, Kathleen, when we were in Houston, it seemed like this uh, investigation was moving at a very rapid clip. Uh, now the reverse seems true, that it's, it really is back to square one. Well, Aaron, this board said when they took over the investigation that it would really become more like a National Transportation Safety Board investigation. And that's where you get basically just the facts, ma'am. They will not be interpreting. They will not be giving you their pet theory of the day. And uh, they are, though, going to try to work through this with much greater haste than they do a traditional investigation because of those um, astronauts, cosmonauts, uh, waiting up there on that space station. Kathleen, thank you. Kathleen Koch in Washington on the NASA investigation. Columbia is in its death throes. NASA releases tapes of the mission control conversation just moments before NASA thinks the shuttle Columbia disintegrated over Texas. The first indication of trouble comes five minutes before breakup when a NASA engineer reports the loss of sensors on Columbia's left wing. Go ahead, Max. FYI, I've just lost four separate uh, temperature transducers on the left side of the vehicle. Uh, hydraulic return temperatures. Two of them on system one and one in the, each of systems two and three. Four high return temps? To the left outboard and left inboard elevons. Okay, is there anything common to them, DSC or MDM or anything? I mean, you're telling me you lost them all at exactly the same time. No, right? not exactly. They were within probably four or five seconds of each other. Okay, where are those? Where is that instrumentation located? They're all four of them are located in the uh, aft part of the left wing. 
There were several attempts to reestablish communications with Columbia, but the only response? Static. The investigation goes on and some questions today on Capitol Hill. For NASA Administrator Sean O'Keefe, CNN Space Correspondent Miles O'Brien joins us here at CNN Center with the latest. Hi, Miles. Here it's now been about 40 hours since uh, the NASA Administrator Sean O'Keefe began answering questions of a joint committee, House and Senate, uh, the two committees that have, are most associated with NASA and uh, oversight of the space agency. Uh, the tone of the questioning thus far has not been um, accusatorial. It's been more of a discussion about the future of the space shuttle program, the future of the International Space Station, budgetary issues, even a question a few moments ago as to whether, uh, in fact, NASA should be thinking about sending people to Mars. Uh, the committee is uh, providing a certain amount of deference to the uh, independent commission headed by retired Admiral Hal Gaiman currently in the midst of this investigation right now. The one question regarding that particular group is how independent is it? It was uh, formed uh, in the hours immediately following the disintegration of Columbia by Sean O'Keefe and his people and the question is is it truly an independent commission? Some members of Congress would like to see a presidential commission which answers strictly to the president as opposed to answering to NASA. Sean O'Keefe saying in principle the issue is as long as it's independent and credible uh, he has no problems with it either way. Uh, one of the issues which is coming up time and again of course is the age of the shuttle fleet. Columbia first flew in 1981. The shuttle design began in the early 70s really an outgrowth of Apollo. We're talking about 30 year old plus technology now and the question is, uh, is the age of the, uh, the orbiters and the age of the technology perhaps a contributing cause to what happened on February 1st? The age factor, again, you're exactly right. The investigation may yet prove or may demonstrate to us that there was a contributor there. But in terms of our efforts to assure that not be a factor, uh, again, it, uh, it, it uh, appears to be every element of diligence could be done to assure that it was a previous flight that operated just perfectly. So now, what about the International Space Station? The construction of the space station is completely dependent on space shuttle orbiters coming to visit periodically, astronauts doing space locks to attach pieces and so forth. In the interim, there are three astronauts still on the space station, two of them U.S. astronauts. How will that be uh, maintained and will it be staffed for the foreseeable future. Sean O'Keefe indicating today it is his intent to keep people aboard that space station uh, using Russian rockets to send people up and bring people back down. The, the question though is how many people can it support? The thinking right now is it can only support two people because there isn't enough water produced on the station right now. The shuttle normally brings bags of water up there. The question is with two people though, how much science can be done? I spoke with the space station crew this morning and I asked the chief science officer, Don Pettit, that question. There's many facets to having a space station. One is doing science. Then we also have uh, maintaining the facilities of the space station itself. And if you drop to a smaller crew, you're going to be spending a higher fraction of your time just working to keep the space station operating. It was said before that it takes about two and a half people just to keep the space station running. So if it was just two people up there, they would be very busy just station keeping. So we'll see how that goes and see how much science they can carve out of what is going to be a very busy, busy schedule for that two-person crew if, in fact, that is the case. The debris. Uh, continued efforts today to gather up that debris, 12 to 15,000 pieces have been bag tagged and are on their way to Florida. Among the interesting findings yesterday, I'm told by some sources, is at least some portion of a laptop computer, which would have been used by the crew primarily in flight or on orbit uh, to do email and so forth and conduct those scientific experiments, not used in the critical phases of flight, ascent and reentry but nevertheless might have some clues in there. And certainly investigators are not going to close their, uh, the door to the possibility that on that hard drive there might be a golden nugget, if you will, of information. And there you see a couple of astronauts there in that hangar as they prepare to reassemble at least the pieces, the puzzle of Columbia. Kira